Tiny bit different, still linear combinations, but we'll come back to this right here. <coughs> so we'll do an example, show that this vector b, 2, negative 2, 1, uh, 2, negative 2, negative 1, is a linear combo of the vectors uh, b1, which would be 1, 0, negative 1. Actually, let's do a super easy example, and then we'll do a more difficult one. So our first vector will be 1, 0, 0. Our second vector will be 0, uh, 2, 0. And our third vector will be 0, 0. Uh, let's go negative 10. All right. So remember, linear combination, I want alpha 1 times 1, 0, 0, plus alpha 2 times 0, 2, 0, plus alpha 3 times 0, 0, negative 10, to equal that vector b, which is 2, negative 2, negative 1. All right, I said this example was easy. I picked it to be intentionally easy. What does alpha 1 have to equal? Why does alpha 1 have to equal 2? And how do you know so early without doing any actual math? This is pretty much all intuition here. Because 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals 2 times the scalar. So those two zeros are super important. If those weren't zeros, you couldn't just say alpha 1 was needing to be 2. So if we look right here, the only way to get uh, the 2 in our constant vector on the right is from the first vector right there. You can't get any of that top coordinate from the second and third vector, so therefore I need alpha 1 to be 2 right there. So we got alpha 1 is 2. What about alpha 2? There's something really similar happening. I can't get any of the second coordinate from the vec v1 or v3. So it all comes from this v2 and alpha 2. So what does alpha 2 have to equal? Alpha 2 has to be negative 1. So we have a 2 there. And so I need to multiply it by negative 1 to get our negative 2 on the right. So alpha 2 is negative 1. Any questions on that idea? So write down what alpha 3 has to equal. And there is exactly one uh, value that works. So what value do we have to have for alpha 3? One tenth. One tenth. All right, so this example was easy because I picked vectors that exactly had one coordinate that wasn't zero. And they lined up nicely so that the first one was basically the x-coordinate, second one was the y-coordinate, third one was the z-coordinate. Now what I'm going to do is pick vectors with the exact same problem, but I'm going to pick v1, v2, and v3 to have uh, coordinates, more than one coordinate that's not zero. So it won't be a trivial problem like this. We'll actually have to work uh, to solve it. So the same vector b2, negative 2, negative 1. So it shows linear combination of 1, 0, negative 1. That'll be v1, b2, 2, negative 3, 1. And b3, 5, negative 4, 0. So there are some zero terms, but not enough to just answer this without doing any uh, actual algebra. So we can set the problem up the same way. So we got alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha 3 v3 5 negative 4 0 equals 
b, which is 2, negative 2, negative 1. So there's three linear equations hiding in here. The first one will be in the top row, just like it always is. So I'll write down the first linear equation that's hiding. Alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 plus 5 alpha 3 equals 2. So I just went, this is the first coordinate right here, just the top coordinate. So any questions on that first, basically that first row turning into this? So I want you to turn the second and third row into equations and then solve the system you wrote down. So you're going to write a linear system and I want you to solve it in a matrix. If you have any questions, it's a good time to ask them. I got the three linear equations on the board. And I didn't record. Oh, I damn recording good. So any questions that you have, it's a good time to ask them.
So you should have 3, 2, negative 1. Any questions on those numbers? And how do we check? What do we do? We plug it into the uh, some, well, in this case, we're plugging into a system. Now, the question is which system? There is the system that I built our matrix on right here, but is that the original? That's not really the original. The original was I wanted to prove there's a linear combination. So really the original is that right there. That was the first equation I wrote down. So let's check in that right there. So I think we had three, two, negative one. So I'll check with the green marker. So we got three times one, zero, negative one plus two times two, negative three, one, minus one times five, negative four, zero. So we'll figure this out. Hopefully it's two, negative two, negative one. So I have three, zero, negative three, plus six, no, four, negative six, two, minus, and I'm actually gonna go plus here and push the negative inside the vector, so we'll go negative five, positive four, zero. And now just add the numbers going across. The reason I push the negative inside the vector is so I could add numbers without worrying about the last one, like changing the sign of the last number. So that's why I push the negative inside the vector. So we have two is our first coordinate and negative two is the second. And then negative one, which hopefully was, yep, that is what we were looking for. All right, so any questions on checking? I'm pretty sure that uh, if I would have plugged them into the second linear system we wrote, we would get uh, a consistent or a correct result, but I just wanted to be double sure, so I plugged in the original without doing any manipulation on it. Okay, so let's go back. We just turned a linear combination into a linear system, so let's go back and see if we can turn that linear system into a linear combination. So that'll be going the other direction. So I'll use the version I just put in that green box right there. So we really only have four. Uh, let's, let's rewrite it with vectors. Uh, basically the same thing, but in vector form. So I'm gonna line up. I know we're only going to have four variables. Well, let's keep going with the notes. I don't know why I'm having such trouble because it should, you're basically transposing things but I'm not seeing how to transpose it right away. So we'll just skip that and come back to it. All right, so, so what we're gonna do now is a similar problem. We're gonna take two vectors, 
and we're going to draw a grid using those two vectors. And we're going to, because you're going to be graphing here, you pretty much have to use two dimensions unless you have a graphing tool for three dimensional graphing. So what we're going to do is draw a new grid using U and V. I'm going to cheat and get some graph paper real quick. So, graph down here. So, go over three, up one, right there. That vector is U, and then vector V is go over one up two. That vector is U. This vector is V. Now when I say draw a grid, what we're going to do is extend both of these vectors. Now it's a little bit strange, but these are going to be our coordinate axes right here. Now that I have these lined up, let's erase our x, y axis. So what the grid is going to look like, you're going to draw parallel lines with the spacing. I'll draw the first version right here. So I'm basically going I'm putting a copy of this entire line U, but the way I'm spacing it out is I'm moving over V. And then I put another one of those parallel lines. Now I'm going to move over V again. So we'll go up to right here. That would be another copy of V right there. And I get another parallel line right there. Now I'm going to move the opposite direction along V. So let's go right about there. There'll be another line like that, another line like that. So you could think of this as the U axis right here. You're basically going in the U direction. So it's not the X axis, we're going in this slightly different direction. Now, the V axis is sort of like the Y axis now. And the origin is pretty important. Let's make sure the origin has a really big indicator right there that that's the origin. So now I have to draw my other grid lines, the ones that are parallel with the vector V. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to start at the end of the vector U, and you're drawing parallel to V now. And then go over the same amount, go over U again, and then draw another parallel line. And now I'm going to go negative U direction, and another parallel line, and another parallel line. So this grid we just made is a coordinate plane, but the two axes are not perpendicular. And in fact, neither of them are aligned with the regular XY axis. So we still have that light grid in the background, that's the xy axis right there, and things are measured in xy coordinates. I'm just going to pick a point, and we'll go with the blue. I'm just going to pick a point, let's go maybe that one right there. So we'll call this vector w. I'm going to zoom way in. What are the standard coordinates of w, if we were counting x's and y's? Remember the origins where it's starting. negative one so over two down one now that is using the xy axis so I'll write that out in its own w coordinates or in its own xy coordinates so we have the vector two negative one over two down one all right I'm gonna do something kind of silly now So what I did is I wrote it as a linear combination of special vectors. You could call the first one the x vector and the second one the y vector. So that 
1, 0, we'll call this the x vector. And 0, 1 will be the y vector. In the future, we're definitely going to have a different name for this. this is, these are called the uh, standard basis vectors. <coughs> So now what I want to do is write W as a combination of U and V. So we can set the problem up. W equals alpha 1 U plus alpha 2 v and then fill in the actual values 2 negative 1 equals alpha 1 times u is 3 1 plus alpha 2 uh, that is 2 1 no 1 2 so you could put this into a matrix and solve it it would be a two equations, or yeah, two equations, two variables, it would be a very easy system. Let's, instead of doing that, I don't think we'll get any real practice doing that, let's use the graph here. Think about going head to tail. Obviously u plus v would put us up here, that would be u plus v, that vector I just drew. So that's not w. So I want you to think about what vectors can I add or subtract to get to uh, the vector w? So just looking at this, think about what vectors can I add or subtract and get w? And then write it down when you know which vectors you should be subtracting. need is a positive u and then go the wrong way or negative v. So go across u and then go the down b. And that will give you the vector w right there. So we can, if we have a good graph, we can figure out uh, what we need here for alpha 1 and alpha 2. So what does that mean for the value of alpha 1 and the value of alpha 2? So I just said w equals u minus v. So we got 1 and negative 1. So there are other ways we can do this. If we have a really nice graph and the numbers aren't so bad, we could look at the graph and figure this out. So let's do one more. Let's go. Let's do the bottom left vector here. Uh, running out of letters for vectors. I don't want to use x for a vector. Let's call this uh, w1. So figure out the coordinates for w1, but just use the graph. So just use the graph here. Remember our grid don't worry about the light grid in the background, just use the green grid, the grid off of the uh, two vectors. So just count off the grid on the two vectors. I think there should be an intersection if my graph was better. I should have an intersection point here, but just pretend that it does. How many u's do we need? Negative two. Negative two. So we have to go on the u axis the wrong way, sort of down left, and we have to go over twice. So that would be negative two u. And what about v? 
also negative 2. So once we do our negative 2u, I'll draw that vector in blue here. That's negative 2u. Then we're going to go the wrong way in the v direction twice as far as v goes. That's negative 2v right there. So the triangle looks just like that. We went two, negative 2 in the u direction and then negative 2 in the v direction. Any questions about that right there? And if I had the xy coordinates, if I bothered, I did, just didn't want to compute the xy coordinates because I knew my graph was bad. So I can already tell it didn't land on an integer intersection right there. So I already knew things were going wrong. So there was no reason to try to write the uh, xy coordinates down. I would have just had problems. Can't you find them Yep, I could recover them just by plugging in the u and the v values and then basically figure out w1 from that. So, for sure. What's that? That was minus 6 minus 8. Minus 6 minus 8, I believe it. Wait. Minus 8 minus 6. Oh no. So, now we're going to look at some arithmetic, no more algebra for a little while. Uh, but this is going to be new arithmetic. We're going to look at a different set. This is going to be called modular arithmetic. So we're going to start with the integers, negative 2, it's all numbers that fit the pattern. So basically every, no, every whole number including all the negatives and 0, those are the integers. Z with a little m or z sub m. So it's going to be integers divided by m times the integers. So what in the world is m z? This is going to be all multiples of m. going to look like negative 2m, negative m, 0, m, 2m, etc. So for example, let's do an easy 3z. That's going to be negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, etc. It's so all multiples of 3. All integer multiples of 3. Now this division sign right here, what this one actually means is everything in the set down here is going to be equal to zero. So this mz right here elements in this set are zero. So if we look at z mod or z divided by 3z, I could start writing out the elements in here. I'm going to start at zero. So according to what I just said, 3 is equal to zero. So 3, I don't need to write in there again. And then what about 4? So you might be thinking, what about 4? Well, you don't lose the arithmetic properties you had. So 4 is 3 plus 1. And what is 3? 0. So 4 is 1. Let's look at 5. 
So 5 is 3 plus 2, which is 0 plus 2, which is 2. And 6, 3 plus 3, which is 0 plus 0, which is 0. So there, if you, and hopefully you can see if I, what would 7 equal? 4 plus 3. It would be 4 plus 3, which is 4 which is 1. And what about 8? Could reduce to 5, reduce to 2. 9 is uh, 3 plus 6, or 9 is 6, and which is 3, which is 0. All right. Let's get crazy and go with the negative numbers. So let's start with negative 1. So negative 1 will be, it's a good way to write that, 2 minus 3, which is 2 minus 0, which is 2. So negative 1 is 2, negative 2 is 1 minus 3, and 3 is 0. Negative 2 is 1. So you might be thinking, well, yes, there's another way to write negative 1 other than 2 minus 3. Let's think of another way to write negative 1. What about... Negative 15 plus negative 14? Yeah, let's not use such big... Let's keep it like... Let's make sure we're using 3 or negative 3, or a multiple of 3. So let's go... 3 minus 4, and 3 is 0, so it's the same as minus 4. I can add 6 to it, and get to 2. So, it may appear random, but the number you eventually get to better be the same number. I should not be getting to a 1, for example. So the best way to think about this, if I just draw a nice number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so I'll just go with different colors, how about that? So what I'm going to do is every number that's the same, I'll make sure it has the same color. So 0 will go with blue, 1 will go with green, 2 will go with Oh, it's not that crazy. They just keep repeating. So another way to think about this is if you divide, you're looking at the, divide by three, look at the remainder. That's another way to think about this. You can divide by three, look at the remainder. So for example, uh, any numbers between zero and all the numbers zero to two, divide by three, their, their own remainder. Like 0 divided by 3 is 0, remainder 0. 1 divided by 3 is 0, remainder 1. 2 divided by 3 is 0, remainder 2. Then we move over to the 3, 4, 5. Our remainder of 3 divided by 3 is 0. Remainder of 4 divided by 3 is 1. Remainder of 5 divided by 3 is 2. And that pattern... Oops, whoa, I already messed it up. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. This repeats forever and repeats, of course, in the negatives in a weird way. We don't normally do negative 1 divided by 3, uh, but the pattern does keep going right there. So let's, let's see, when you first learned how to add 
and multiply you made addition charts or tables and multiplication tables so let's go ahead and do that so we, we're doing a mod 3 so let's go ahead and write an addition table for mod 3 And you can write 3 mod 3z as z with a little 3 after it. So it's a little faster way to write it. So we're making an addition table. The only numbers we have are 0, 1, and 2. 0, 1, and 2. So it's a very small table. There are no other numbers that are not in this table. So this tells you how to multiply every single number together in this system. Or how to, sorry, how to add every number to, together. All right, so I want you to fill this out. I'll go and do the crazy one. What's two plus two? One. One. So I better not see a three or a four anywhere in this table. You got three choices, zero, one, or two. Goes in every single box. So figure out what goes in what box. The one row, one column, or the zero row, zero column should be super easy. Anything plus zero is the thing. So do the easy row column first, and then worry about the other ones. And you already know one plus one. And good news is two is just two. So what is two plus one? Zero. Zero. What's one plus two? Zero. Zero. And of course one plus one is two. Everybody knows that. Two. And two plus two is one. Everybody knows that too. All right, so any questions on our table? So now we're going to multiply. So it's going to look the same. The only difference is the obviously the products are slightly different than the sums, and we're going to switch the plus to multiplication. So that's the difference. So same size table, we get the same same numbers. And I'm going to use a dot for multiplication. So fill it out the exact same way you did before, just multiplying. So make sure I don't see any threes or fours in your table. And just like before, there'll be a pattern, but it won't be this sort of weird increasing diagonal pattern that was in our last table. It'll be a slightly different pattern. Any questions on this uh, table here? You should see zeros overrepresented because zero times anything is zero. Every time zero is getting into a product, it's going to be too many zeros, basically. Not too many, but there'll be a lot of zeros. <coughs> All right, let's go to let's go to Z six. So I can write every number in Z6 out, 0, 1, 2, whoa, 2 turned into a comma. <laughs> so 
going to do an addition table for Z6 first. So I'll do row three. And you can do the other rows. So I did three plus zero is three, three plus one is four, three plus two is five, three plus three is six, but that's represented as zero. Three plus four is seven, which will be a one, and three plus five is eight, which will be a two. So that's how I got the row right here. So I want you to get the other five rows in the table. And if you've got any questions, it's a good time to ask them. Oh, time to go. So more different clock times. One building. Is it time to go? Two minutes? Okay, so you can finish this table then. Right here. Hopefully you noticed your, basically each row you went down, it kind of shifted over one, but it also wraps around, so it kind of, I guess you could think of it almost like a Rubik's Cube, where it kind of rotates one tick each time you go down, is one way to think about it. And the same thing that's happening in Z3, it may not have been as obvious, because there's way less numbers, so it's harder to see patterns if there aren't lots more examples. So the same thing was happening here. And then multiplication is going to get crazy as well. So we'll do that tomorrow.